Okay, so, Boots. This song is in Clawhammer style. The intro is just a slowed down version of the chorus riff. It's kind of an interesting song because um, it has a, excuse me, the chorus actually doesn't have any lyrics. The chorus is just an ins- just an instrumental chorus. So the chorus is just the... Thank you, Nikki. Ooh, cacao and shrooms and stuff. That sounds fucking awesome. Mushroom powder. I've heard good things. I've had that mushroom coffee a little bit. But I love, I just love me some, love me some coffee. Uh, mostly just single hammer-ons. Okay, so the intro. Um, now, the intro is in swing feel. And I explained this a little bit on the um, the YouTube banjo lessons that i've put out um but swing feel is like instead of instead of every note being like for for example instead of each eighth note being the exact same duration which is usually how it works like an eighth note is just tut 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 with swing feel you have you have um it's still written as eighth notes but you'll see this here this uh uh little thing at the top so it says two eighth notes is equal to like um a quarter note and an eighth note triplet feel it's also called triplet feel so an easy way to think about this is instead of tut 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 it's like you're riding a horse so it's tut 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 so one note is slightly longer and one slightly shorter and it gives it that kind of ta 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 It's called swing feel or triplet feel. So the intro is just a slowed down version of the the main chorus um, in that swing feel. So it's... Trotting, exactly. Okay, that's the intro. So it's got that swing feel. Instead of being like, this would be straight. That would be straight and then swing feel. Okay, so the intro is in that swing feel. Um, I made this tab. This is the Guitar Pro tab. So the cool thing about this is it can actually like, it'll play along. Uh, Kauko, thank you for the follow. Welcome on in. We're just doing a little banjo lesson right now. Um, so yeah, this is going to auto scroll. I can change the, the tempo on this. So I have it set at 140 BPM. I'm just going to, let's turn it down. We'll do the intro once slow and then we'll do it once up to speed since the intro is slow anyway. And then we'll move on. So let's maybe try like, see how like uh, 110 sounds for the intro, for a slow version of the intro. Okay, yeah, that sounds okay. Okay, so let's play along with this. It's gonna count in eight, eight counts. And then we're gonna plunk along with the intro. Then we'll do the intro up to speed and then we'll move on. So here we go. Um, how does the tab volume compare to the banjo volume? Should the tab get turned down a little bit? This like MIDI kind of <laughs> ticks mark buck. Yes, I'm kind of. I'm not watching the chat as much either because I don't. I'm trying not to get too distracted because <laughs> I am putting this on YouTube later. So I'll I'll watch the chat, but I won't be answering absolutely everything. Just FYI, I think it's good. Tab turned down a little. I'm gonna turn it down just a touch. It feels a little bit loud for me. Pull it down just a little bit. All right. Okay. Now, remember, if you're on YouTube, another thing you can do is you can uh, 
um, adjust. If you click the little cog, there's a playback speed. You can go faster or slower. So if you still need this slowed down even more, um, and you're watching this later on YouTube, then by all means, click that and get it to an appropriate speed. Um, I should take a second to explain how a hammer-on works. It's very simple tech, left-hand technique. You hit the first, so in this first uh, uh, bit of the tab here, it's a three to five hammer-on on the second string. So the first finger is on the third fret. I hit that string, and then the next note I don't actually pluck. I just hammer on with my ring finger, and then that's what plays the note. Okay, so if you're brand, brand new and you don't know what a hammer-on is, that's what's going on. So that way I'm not going... Like, I don't even know how that would work. It's just... Cervantes, thank you for the bits. Okay, so it's just... If I was just doing the right hand... And that's the basic rhythm that you need to get down if you want to learn how to play claw hammer. It's called the bum diddy rhythm. Bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy. <laughs> Shooting the shit in class. Yeah, I'm just ignoring the class. I'm just pretending you're all paying attention while I go through my lesson. Uh, before anyone I'm missing as you're coming in, by the way, welcome on in. Normally I'd be I'd be checking the chat a lot more, but I'm trying to keep this concise somewhat. Okay? So that's all we're doing in that intro part is just hammer-ons. And then a pull-off is the exact same thing, just in the opposite direction. So this time I'm gonna hit the fifth fret. Uh sorry, hit the second string with my right hand, and then the uh ring finger is going to pull off from the fifth fret to the third. And that's what plays that note on the third. So in, when you're looking at the tab, anytime you see these these guys here, um, actually, no, you're not seeing that. Here we go. Anytime you're seeing, are you seeing my mouse? There it is. Um, anytime you see this, this like tied note, it's called a tied note, um, but this little like line connecting the notes with a, a P means pull off and then H means hammer on. So that means that the second note, you're not actually going to pluck with the right hand. Okay. Okay, so let's try this. This is going to be up to speed. The intro up to speed this time. Ready? Pull-offs, not pull-outs, you sickos. Pull-offs. How pronounced should the swing tempo be compared to the straight tempo of the double time section? That's a good question. Um, I find when we play it live, it's very pronounced. When we play it live, it's very much like... But on the recording, I think it's a little less pronounced. Really just personal preference. That's a good question, though. <clears throat> Bum did it. Hey, I didn't say nothing. Yeah, you should be pulling off always, Karen Z. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move into the main section, which is, again, the exact same thing. But it's just um, uh, without that triplet feel. So it's just... Okay, so we're going to do that next. We're going to do this at three speeds. We're going to do, let's do 80 BPM. We'll do 110 and then 140. 140 is what I have the Guitar Pro tab set at, which was pretty approximate to what the recording was, but we recorded it live. So it's not going to be exactly 140 if you're listening to the, to the record. Yeah, man, don't doubt yourself. This shit's not, it's not that tough. And again, uh, guys, again, for the people who are watching live on Twitch, this will be on YouTube. This is like, 
I don't expect anyone who hasn't learned this song before to be able to just by the end of this lesson be finished with it. This is like something that you can go back and look at um, over and over again. Okay, so let's turn the tempo down here. Guitar Pro is a little weird with how it does tempos. It, it works on kind of like a keyframe sort of a system, so I always have to go back to the start when I want to change the tempo. So let's go to 90 and see how this feels. All right, so we're here. Okay, so this is a slowed down version of the main chorus riff. Okay, it's the exact same thing as the intro. So we're just going to play along here. And that just repeats. That's actually quite fast. We'll consider that the... Uh, the medium one. That was faster than I was expecting. We'll slow that down even more here. So let's do it again. Let's go to like 60 BPM. That's very slow. Let's do, yeah. Okay, so one more time if you're playing along. Sadie, you have a great day. Thanks for hanging with us. <laughs> I fucked up my own song there because <laughs> it's so slow. Let's try that again. We'll do it one more time slow. There we go. Classic. <laughs> Doing great. Mitch, welcome on in, man. Good to see you. <laughs> Crying in Three Fingers Scruggs style. Someone was like, hey, can you uh, make a boots tab, but in Three Fingers style? I was like, oh, sure. Let me just rearrange the entire fucking song for you. Re-teach it to myself and then make a brand new tab. Yeah, mm hmm Hey, uh, Flea, could you do Around the World on the harp for me? I can only find the bass tab. Why can't I get Around the World on the harp, Flea? <laughs> Yo, Destro, what's up, dude? All right, so here we go. Uh, chorus again, chorus riff at 60 BPM. We'll do medium again, and then we'll do up to speed. <laughs> he probably good played on the harp. <laughs> the verses there okay so that's slow again if you're watching this on youtube play that back as many times as you have to adjust the sound or the playback speed on youtube to make it slower if you have to yeah dude it's turning out good hey destro it's looking sweet the uh our traveling stygian cover is gonna be pretty fucking dope by the way <clears throat> Okay, um, we'll go back up to 90 BPM here. Oops, see, this is, yeah, it gets kind of weird. Let me cancel. I got to go back to the start. Then change it to 90. Okay. All right. Here is the chorus riff again. This is 90 BPM, so this is medium, medium speed. Not quite fully up to speed yet. Okay. 
that as many times as you have to, as many, many times as you have to. And then we'll do once up to speed. And then there's really only like a verse section and then an uh, outro section. It's a quite a quite a simple song. And if you're if you're new to Clawhammer, um, this is a good this is a good starting song. This is a good uh, Clawhammer starting song. I can't wait till we drop it either, man. And also, guys, uh, if you have questions in the Twitch chat, let me know. Falcon had a really good question earlier. Uh, if you have any questions about Claw Hammer, Hammer Ons, Pull Offs, this song specifically, uh, it's a great time to great time to ask him. So we'll go back up to. I had it set to 140, which I think is going to feel a little bit fast, but we'll uh, we'll see. All right, so this is up to speed. We'll see how this feels. This is fast version. That actually feels pretty close. As close to how we play it live, it might be a little like might be a little quicker um, than the record, but should still be okay. Uh, ben Simon, <laughs> absolutely. I thought you'd never ask, Ben. <laughs> Everybody, go follow Ben. We're doing a little banjo lesson here, Ben. Follow Destro. Follow Ben. Follow Quantum. All the homies. Oh shit. We got some Tron going on. Okay, so the next part is the verses. The verses are simple. The verses are just full chord shapes. So um I play all the chords for this choppy part in the verses. Um in like a higher up position because I don't want any open strings on the chords that I'm playing for this part. Reason being, I like to, these should be like staccato chops. These should be very just like quick. So for the C, for example, I'm playing the C uh, bar chord, the fifth fret. When I hit this, when I hit this chord, I just have to like release the tension on the strings a little bit with my uh, left hand. And it immediately stops the stops the chord, right? If I'm playing it down here, and I do the same thing, I can stop all. I can stop three of the strings, but the the G string is open, so that G string rings out. You can use the you can use your right palm as well, but I find I get that that better like choppy feel when I'm playing uh, with no open strings on these chords. So that's why I'm playing the the C up here. Same thing with the G. Instead of playing an open G, I'm playing the G in the uh, like the major chord shape, starting on the the fifth fret here. And you'll notice I'm just chopping the on beat. So you're playing the chord on the on the. Uh, Excuse me, on the off beat, and you're chopping on the on beat, or at least when I play it live, I chop. So this is again, I'm just. This is another reason I play the chords in this position, is because when I'm on the that C chord position, I can just release the tension on the strings, but still keep my uh, finger on the strings, and I just hit the strings with my right hand, and it gives me that chop sound. It's just like a dead note, so. And the D, I'm playing the full D chord shape. And then E minor, I'm even playing up here. That's four on the third string, five, five on the first, and, uh, second, and first strings. Okay. So let's go back down to 60 beats per minute. We'll play through this, uh, this verse part. It's very, very simple. Just off beat chops. Uh, where are we here? We'll go down to 60 again. I'll play through this once. 
and then the next part's the interlude, and then like kind of the bridge at the end, and then that's it. That's there's, there's only three or four parts in the whole song. G string, yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm missing some of the chat here. <clears throat> Major problems deadening the strings on the left. Let me see here. Place a hand, at least hold it. Got small ass fingers, hands. <laughs> yeah, it should be easy. Are you, are you, is the problem that when you're trying to play the note, the note comes out dead? Like that? Because if that's the, if that's the case, then I think I know, I could guess probably what the problem is. What's likely happening is like, let's say you're doing a C chord, for example. You're probably, your hand position is probably such that like, and this is a very common beginner mistake, is your hand is often too much like this, not enough like this. You almost, you want your fingers coming like perpendicular off the fretboard instead of laying across the fretboard. There are some exceptions, obviously like a bar chord, you're going to have your finger laying across, but typically you want them kind of like sticking up at almost a 90 degree angle. And what a lot of beginners will do is they'll kind of have their hands angled like this. So when, right now my middle finger is, just very lightly touching this G string. So when I go to play the chord, you'll see that G note is kind of dead. And if it's the other notes that are that are dead, you might just not be pushing hard enough. You might be getting like this kind of a sound, right? Another thing it could be is you might have, if I'm playing the second fret, look where my, look at where my uh, finger is on the second fret. It's like, directly behind the fret. You don't want it on top of the fret. That'll give you kind of a dead note and you don't want it way back here either because you have to apply way more tension to get a good note. So you want your finger just right behind the fret that you're playing, if that makes sense. Let's scroll through this here a little bit. Shadowy Dad says, hi, hell yeah. Everything's dead. <laughs> yeah, if you send me a video, Kevin, send me a video and... Um, Specifically, like with the left hand zoomed in, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll help you fix it. You commend my focus. Thanks. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard not looking at the chat as much. Okay, so let's. Uh, we're at sixty BPM, so we're gonna go through the this verse section here. So if you're playing along, play along. Any more questions? Just let me know. This might be too slow for this part, but we'll see how it feels. Thank you for the sub. Okay. So that's the verse car verse part very, very much slowed down. Um, if the, again, if that's still too slow or still too fast and you're watching it on YouTube, adjust the playback speed. Um, I'm not going to go into teaching you guys all of the chord shapes and that kind of a thing. I'm assuming that you have a very, like a little bit of prior knowledge. Um, but if you don't know the chord shapes, you can just Google like banjo chord shape chart. And actually, if you're looking at the tab, they're all up here too, at the very top, all the variations. So I show you the E minor down here, as well as the E minor up here because both versions of the E minor are used. Okay, same thing with uh, C. The first C used is the bar, sh bar chord C, but in the interlude, I do use the first position C. So that's up there too. So if you if you don't know what the chords, um, they're all at the top of the at the top of the tab there for you. So let's go back to 90 beats per minute. We'll play through that section again. Here we go. <laughs> I 
Uh, Priscilla, I'll answer your question after this. Okay, so Priscilla's question. The fat part of my hand mutes the first string sometimes while holding it at 90 degrees up. So this, like the fleshy part of the palm is muting the first string here. It could be that you have your hand almost too wrapped around like this. Um, but yeah, it should help. So like my uh, my palm is actually quite, it's kind of hard to see, but it's actually sitting quite, quite a ways away from the neck. You can kind of see I'm not sitting like this. I do have a bad habit sometimes when I'm playing live of playing kind of like this, but really you should be, you'll see some players, they really exaggerate this and have their wrists sticking way out like this. I find this just kind of gets tiring after a while. Um, so my, I kind of have found a happy medium here, but yeah, you don't want the fleshy part of your palm touching here. That will, that, that will deaden the string. If that's, if that's what's deadening it, it could also be one of the other things I talked about, like uh, you're too far back too far behind the fret, too on top of the fret, etc. <clears throat> no worries, no worries, Ben, no worries. Yeah, yeah, what Falcon said, use the fingertips. You want to be pushing down, you want to be pushing down with like the top of the finger. Not with like this, not with like the pad. That makes sense? You want to be pushing down here. Okay, so we'll do the verse part. One more time, up to speed. Uh, oh yeah, I got to go back here. It's 140. Okay, so verse, up to speed now, offbeat chops, here we go. And then now typically in the song, after that part, it would go back to. But for the tab, I just wrote each part once just to keep it concise. Okay, so now the interlude, I'm, I don't think we're even going to bother doing this in like slowed down either because these are just whole note chord strums. Okay, so it's tickle my boobs. And I will love you. So now we're doing this part. Now this part's a little interesting. Um, I'm playing, it's a C, G, B, E minor. Playing that through twice, but I'm playing the chords in different positions. So I start up here with the uh, C on the fifth fret bar position. Okay, and then I do the G in the, like that same fifth fret position. B is the fourth fret bar. And then I go down to this E minor. Okay. And then now the next C starts down here and then works its way back up. So from this E minor, I just place the index finger down to make the like first position C. Okay. And then I do just the open G. Then I do this B7. Like the first position B7. And then the E minor up here. Okay. The reason is I just kind of liked this descending. Oh, sorry. And then ascending on the first string. So I like the I like the first string 
that note on the on the C, that note again on the G, this one here, and then this one here. Okay, so that's why I'm doing those chords there. It's really a matter of personal preference. You could do them all in this position here if you want, and it would still sound fine. You could do them all in the first position. It would still sound fine. <clears throat> Yeah, experiment with wrist and hand angles. Same thing. If you want to send me a video of where you're having trouble, um, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, you sure you don't want to just whip it out? Middle of the lab. <laughs> Own twist for playing this part solo. But once you switch positions to the first position, oh, so you're doing a little like, like a pull off there. That's cool. That's some nice little flavor. I like it. Um, and yeah, people watching this on Twitch, exclamation point tab, uh, you'll get the tab. And anyone watching this on YouTube later, I'll have a link to the tab in the description. Okay, so we're not going to bother. We'll, let, we'll try this at full speed and just see. Maybe we'll feel like we need to slow it down. But I think since this is just whole note, whole note um, strums, it should be okay. So let's just give this part a shot here. Do that one more time. <laughs> okay, next section. <clears throat> so this one has like I'm just trying to look through this here. It, it goes through a bunch of times with a bunch of different like endings. Um, so this is kind of just like an abridged version. How do I how do I put this? It's it's very similar to the, but you're only playing kind of like part of it. So this is just going behind. The guitars are strumming. Uh, the mandolin's also strumming. Just that. And I will love you. That part just keeps going. Okay, and then after the banjo strumming that one time, it goes to this. I play it a little bit differently every time we play it live. So it's not like the tab is an approximation. And when you're playing this yourself, like just kind of have fun with it. But the most important parts are these, these notes at the start of each uh, measure here. So this part, and then I'm just kind of hitting again, these are just dead notes, but I'm keeping that bum diddy rhythm going with my right hand. And I'm just, just hitting the fifth string essentially. So I'm just hitting like the first four notes. And then throwing in like a, a. Right, just throwing in kind of like little basic um, hammer-ons and pull-offs just for some flavor. But essentially, I, I can't even, it's been so long since I actually wrote this tab. I have some extra notes in here, but the essential idea for this part is that you're just going to be playing those first couple notes. So just a three to five hammer on, two to four on the third string, zero to two on the third string, and then uh, this little scale down four two, and then a hammer on zero to two on the fourth string. Okay, so we'll go through this part um, slow, medium, and fast. And then it's just back into the chorus one more time, and that's it. That's the song. 
Um, and we'll play through the whole song with like the music and everything after. We'll do that once. So let's go back down to 60 BPM. I love the mute. It. Yeah, I, I like that part too. It's it's like it's subtle, but it's uh it's kind of fun. Okay, I'm actually <laughs> just I'm just gonna listen to this once really slow because it's gonna be kind of confusing even for me. Let's just listen to it once. Ben, don't apologize, dude. Okay, so, and this repeats over and over again. So what we're going to do for the sake of this lesson is we're just, you'll see this is endings one to five. Um, this repeats over and over and over again. For the sake of this lesson, we're just going to do it once. And then there's this sixth ending, which is where I go. Okay. Um, we can practice that sixth ending separately. Maybe we'll do that. So we'll just practice that interlude part because it just repeats over and over again. It's just the exact same thing, except for that, that final time you do it. Instead of doing the, you just go. That's basically it. You're just doing the, the bump ditty rhythm with a hammer on zero to two on the fourth string. Lerina, welcome in. Possum, welcome in. Anyone I'm missing. We're doing a little lesson here, so uh, I'm not as active in the chat just for the time being. But everybody, welcome in. Good to see you guys. Okay, so let's try this out. Simple, simple like a pimple. And again, on this tab, I have some extra notes thrown in here. Like, uh, I got like, yeah, that little. But again, the main thing is just those first four notes of each measure. Measure. Throw in whatever you want else for flavor. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's do it one more time slow just because it's really short. We'll do that medium speed now. Switch her back here. Do -do -do -do. So same thing, medium speed. time. Okay. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, go back and do that as many times as you need to. And one more time up to speed. Uh, 140. We'll do this one a couple times. We'll just let it repeat. Okay. 
And then again, that sixth ending. Uh, essentially the same thing. You're just going... It just holds it a little bit longer on that E minor. So I'll, I'm just going to play that slowly so you can watch what my right hand and left hand are doing. We won't bother going along with the tab, but it's essentially just the all the plucking is happening on the... Uh, um, with the index finger is happening on the fourth string, and you're just doing a hammer on zero to two. That's basically it. Okay. Um, and then there is... Uh, this last part here, last part of the interlude. So let's see what the sixth ending does here again. Okay, so, um, so yeah, this is when kind of the rest of the band comes in and then that interlude kind of goes back into the normal tempo. We're doing, it's very similar to the chorus riff, um, but we're kind of just staying on each uh, part twice. So we're starting on the, the C again, three to five hammer on, and then down to the G, uh, two to four hammer on two times. And then this is the trickiest part of the whole song right here. Is this. Whoops. Okay, there's a drop thumb in there. So drop thumbing in, in claw hammer. Typically, I was talking about the bum diddy rhythm earlier. Right, we're going. Right, we're doing that bum diddy rhythm. Typically the thumb. Typically, the thumb is just hanging out on this fifth string, right? And in this song, up to this point, the thumb hasn't played anything other than the fifth string, okay? For every single part, we're doing... Right, or even if in our, like... The thumb has not left the fifth string. This little part here is where the thumb is going to leave the fifth string. Um... So the way this works is it's still the same bum diddy rhythm. Your thumb is still plucking the note in the same like rhythmic spot. It's just plucking a different string. And in this case, it's going to be the sec, uh, the uh, open second string. Okay, so we're going to look at just this, just this, uh, so you can see my mouse, just this part right here. Okay, we'll play this part just really slow. So it's a hammer on zero to two. And you'll notice, if you watch the right hand, my thumb is now, my first, my uh, index finger is hitting the f uh, first string on the first fret, and then my thumb is hitting the second string open. And then my index finger goes down, and then the thumb hits the fifth string like normal. So it's still, a, it's still the bum diddy rhythm. We're just bringing that thumb down. Okay. So that's the trickiest part of the song by a mile. If there's a part that I fuck up live, it's always that. I'm playing the drum at that part. Oftentimes, if, I, if there's something I fuck up, I'll, I'll miss that note. Okay. Other than that, this song is basically just like simple claw hammer. 
Um, but that part right there has a drop thumb in it. It can be kind of tricky. So again, we're going, I, I just start my fi my left hand in that B7 position. So uh, second fret on the third string and first fret on the second, or on first fret on the first string. Okay, and then I do my hammer on. I do my regular bum ditty and then the drop thumb. So index finger plucks the first string, thumb hits the second, index hits the third, and then thumb hits the fifth. Okay. Okay, and then the part preceding that, again, this repeats itself six times, so we'll just go through. We won't bother with uh, repeating it over and over and over again. But the part leading up to that is this part here. Okay, so it's just, again, it's just C, G, B, and E minor. So just three to five hammer on twice. Two to four hammer on on the third string twice. Okay, then the B7 drop thumbing part. And then just an E minor. And this one I'm going... So you, the, the index finger is going um, fourth string and then up to first string, so... Okay, so we'll go through that section fast, uh, slow, medium, and fast. And that's basically it. And then on the sixth repetition, this part down here, all this is is just that uh, B7 drop thumb part over and over again, going into the final chorus. It's when Scott's doing, and I will love, he's doing that harmony. And then everything cuts out, and Scott and I do this last part here. And then back into the chorus, and that's it. That's the song. So we will do this section here, slow, medium, and fast. And then that's it. Uh, where are we here? Oops. Jesus. What have I done? Still getting the hang. It's been years since I've used Guitar Pro. I'm still getting the hang of it here. Back to 60. Okay, so this is the second part of the interlude. Anyone I'm missing when, as you're coming in, welcome on in. trickiest part. Okay. Again, do that as many times as you have to. That's going to be the, the trickiest part. We'll increase the tempo again here to 90. Do the same part. close attention to the right hand. Oops, I shouldn't have, I, I shouldn't have talked there. Let me try that again. I got off time. Once up to speed. Oops, one forty. We'll play through this four times. Okay. 
And that's it. That's basically the song. Then the sixth ending, once again, is nothing that we haven't seen before. It's just that B7 drop thumbing part repeated. And then... Into that part for the final chorus. That's it. That's the song. Practice makes perfect. That is the song, guys. So let's play along to the whole song. <clears throat> so I hope this was a good lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've never done this live on Twitch before. This is the very first one. Um, it's pretty fun. It's a relatively simple song, so it didn't take very long. I hope you guys learned something. If I'm, I hope, sorry if I missed any questions. Um, so what we're gonna do now is, ooh, thank you. Rich, thank you. Zach, good to see you, bro. Um, let's just play along with the song. Okay, here we go. This is Boots. Edumacated. Here's the chops. Again, playing the full chord position to get that nice staccato. And to enable me to hit that chop dead note in between each one. Just by tensioning and releasing with the left hand. Gage and Wolf, what money? song okay this part up and down the neck to get those melody notes with the first string this is the part where we're just playing the first four notes throw in some little trills and hammer-ons and pull-offs for flavor I won't, I won't drop it. Okay, now this is the fast part with the drop thumbing, B7. on that E minor. Boom. Now you know how to play boots. If you're watching this on YouTube, follow my Twitch channel for more. Those of you watching on Twitch right now, I appreciate it. I'm sorry if I missed any questions. Sorry if I missed you guys as you were coming in. Uh, I didn't want to get too distracted for the people that are going to watch that on YouTube later. Hell yeah, we did it. 
I've been nervous about that for a long time. 